Hello. All right. Yeah, Robert, can you hear much better now? Quick that. Right. Hello. All right. Yes, Rob. How are you, brother? Right, Sweeney TV, Sean Swift, Sweeney YouTube, um, Sweeney HQ, Robert Grosvenor, Ministry of Barbers. Little conversation today about what's going on, guys. Sorry about um, all of, like, the first bit. We will edit it out when they uh, say. Uh, anyway, Sweeney TV, Robert John Grosvenor. Happy New Year, Robert. How are you? And um, did you have a good Christmas? Not bad, mate. You know, I'm, I'm recovering from COVID. I got the I got the symptoms just before we broke up, mate, from the shop. Oh no way! I've been I've been in isolation uh, ten days, and it ends tomorrow. Um, but you know, you know what? Um, poor bar, like at first, you have a high temperature, and, and uh, if you don't feel too good. You have the standard aches and pains, like you've got a common cold, and. Look, look, look! The flu, really, and uh, I've lost my taste, so I can't mm. taste my flu, you know. But uh, generally, other than that, mate, um, I'm on the mend, you know. I mean, it's interesting, you know, that you, once we uh, went and had a test, um, come back within 11 hours, and that's positive for me and the wife. And um, mm. prior to that, you know, track and trace, God, they don't half check up on you, you know. Unbelievable. Mm. They're ringing you, they message you, they're, they share the information with the local authority as well. Yeah, of course, of course. And, and that, you know, you have a letter off from Public Health England stating you have to isolate, and if you're caught out, you potentially get a two hundred pound fine. Yeah, they they uh, they reject they threatened to jail people and all sorts of stuff. Have you? Um, it's very draconian what's going on. We yeah. uh, basically lost all of our rights. Uh, it's very disappointing what's happening. Um, but Rob, like you know, stay positive. It's all about love. We just started a new, a new, a new, uh, a new, a new era of uh, of our lifetimes. You know, moving into uh, the uh, the, um, the, um, the new energies on the planet, which are coming in from Aries. But you know, Rob, how, how is how is how was your Christmas? Did you enjoy yourself? I know it was a bit different. A lot of people, you know, yeah. they, they 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 struggled, but. This Christmas has been a hard for a lot of people up and down the country, including me. Mm. You know, I have now to see my own family, you know, because obviously we've had COVID, so it's been difficult. But you know, thanks for the realm of social media, you can still speak to them over, uh, you know, the FaceTime and then and you can speak to them there, and that just gives me up a little bit, you know. Um, and Christmas, this Christmas has been hard for a lot, a lot of people, you know, and uh, all I can say is. Um, good riddance to 2020. And yeah, definitely. A positive spin on 2021. Because, you know what, um, when you see all these five figures of people being tested positive for coronavirus, and I've always said this um, about uh, the virus itself, and I, I'm not disputing that people haven't died from it, they have. And, you know, my, my hand goes out, out to them that people have lost ones, and for their family, they've been very close, and this and that. And I, you know, I really sympathise with them. But the fact of the matter is, is that we've had 50, 57,000 today uh, positive, for instance. And I've had track and trace on the phone, and I asked them this question, and I knew she won't share me the data. They won't. Why is it that the media aren't telling us how many people are recovering from COVID-19? Do you know what I mean? The, the mm. thing is, so what's going to happen with the amount that we've been getting, if there's going to be high numbers, mm. 57,000 today. Mm. Now, the way I see it, Sean, eventually, I would say at least 50% of the British public will eventually get it. Mm. And the herd immunity will, will be the way ahead of it as well, not just the vaccine. Mm. Because You're the right. thing is, um, I've had it, right? Um, it's still in the system, probably, uh, but <laughs> potentially, yes, I can get it again. Uh, not mm. that what you were saying to me is not, not for two to three months, but it, it, it worked to get it again. Mm. Your body 
не знаю, Tales of New Means. So the fear, so the fear in there. Sorry? It's the fear, Rob. It's the fear. It's the fear of everything which is going on. And just got to turn off from it, Rob. It's it's the media. It's the media that like to sell that negative news to you. And you know what? My advice to any of you: just come after Tello. Right? Watch as many. Get on Netflix, box box sets, whatever. Just come after the news. Don't listen to the news because they love selling the negative side mm. of the news. They don't yeah. like selling good news. But good news isn't good, is it? No. Bad news travels a lot faster, so they can fear factors even more strong in their lives. It's controlling directly. Mm. So if I was to say to you, who runs the country at the moment? Is it government or media? The media, the world, world, world scaremongers out there, mate. The right, just, just, to, just, to, just to stop you, just for one second. Have you seen the new Weatherspoons advert they put blasted all over the internet? And they put all over their pubs because their pubs are very special in Wales. They basically outed the Conservative Party. They're all from Oxford University. They're all being paid. They're all, they're all in the situation of gang mentality. And as you know, to build a decent country, you need diversity. You know, they, they brought a coin out just to rub it in, right? And it says on the 50, 50p coin, I've got one here actually, it says Britain was built on diversity. Well, that's a load of bollocks because every single Conservative member who's doing this to us is from Oxford. And they've, been, they've known about all this from the start one. And this is what I'm saying. It's like the timing of the virus is so perfect in one of the gender to end one. And it's, it, you know, I don't want to talk about conspiracy and stuff like that, but we've got to look at what's really going on, Rob. And the fact of the matter is, they, they're squeezing our necks, mate. Our businesses have been, we've been up in four months last year, four months. Well, I mean, listen, I, I, I'm a positive person, sure. At the end of the day, I'm, a, I'm a, you know, some people are feeling it could be potentially closed up until April. I don't think so, you know, I, I hope not, you know, because the thing, the thing, the thing is, mate, um, businesses are just going to go on that left, right and centre. And you know what? The government are going to have more blood on their hands, potentially, with, again, with big people make, taking their own lives. Suicide or are going to be immense. People are going to be suffering more anxiety and depression. You know, they can't leave on fresh air, can they? Do you know what I mean? They've got they've got mortgages to pay, rents to pay, over it. They've got commitments in life. Families well, you look at... You, you, you look at the hospitality industry, Rob, and the DJs, the nightclub owners, the bar owners, well, the, the bar workers, all these people who work in big events, you know, security, all these people are out of work now. You know, musicians, you know, they can't, they can't, they can't do that. It's been decimated, hasn't it? You know, and, um, you know, you look at, um, you know, the big elite firms like Amazon and Microsoft and all these other companies, they're making a killer, mate. You know, look at the new oh, PlayStation, yeah. look at Sony, yeah. look how much money they made. Look at Netflix, yeah. even Zoom while we're on now, you know. Okay, thanks, Zoom, yeah. nice one. But, you know, they're, they, they're, what they're doing is they've moved everything indoors and they've they, stopped everything they, outdoors. Yeah, yeah, well, it's, it's that control mech, isn't it? You know, I, I mean, it seems to me, mate, you know. I, I don't heard of though, isn't it? It's unheard of, this is worldwide, yeah, it's happening. You know, uh, these measures they put in, you've got to stay in or you can get prosecuted and it's like an, an official round type of thing, you know, it's kind of like, how, how far do they want to take it? How far are they going to take it to it until people think we, we, we've had enough of this now type of thing, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping, Sean, we're shut for another five, six weeks and hopefully the, I think the, the, the UK will start opening back up. Mm. And the reason I'm saying this, and again, I put on such a positive person. It's because so many people are testing positive. There's so many people going for tests. Not everyone's dying of the coronavirus. There's more recovery in it from it. Of course, you know, we, we, one, we, we, we knew this last year, Rob. Yeah, well, we're we still knew. letting them do it like it's just crazy. 
today, 57,000 have been tested positive. That doesn't mean 57,000 are all going to die of COVID-19, does it? Do you yeah, know but I mean? the, the, look at the numbers. The numbers are in the hundreds, and even then, they're not they're not full they're not full COVID deaths. They would die with COVID, not of COVID, with COVID. Like, I mean, listen, I, I do I do believe it's out there. Okay? Yeah, of course. Well, you've got it. <laughs> yeah. According to them. Yeah, yeah, I've got it. Now, you know, and also got a lot of medical uh, professionals in my in my family. And uh, one of them works at the children's hospital in, in, in the city centre. Did you know, this is this how bad it is getting short, but did you know that children's nursing staff now have all been directed to COVID wards because there's such a shortage? Do you know what I mean? This now is at a level that when it all first begun in, in March, that's how bad it is. Mm. Do you know mm. what I mean? So it isn't going to why. Well, it's mutated. It's, I said this, didn't I? Back in October, I said they're going to say it's mutated. It has. It's now SARS COVID 2. Um, yeah. You know, and there's possibly, I don't want to tell you my sources, but there's possibly up to six of them. Well, you know, I mean, listen, uh, again, you know, 2021's a new year. And can it get any worse than 2020? I don't think so, no. You know, um, I, I do I do feel the light at the end of the tunnel is coming. Um, it's whether it takes two months, three months or four months. Um, I, I do feel that we are coming out of it. But we've got to get on top of things now. Governments around the world, are, are right, especially conservative governments, I just think they've acted too slowly on certain things. Mm. You know, when you're going to lock down a country, you lock it down, all of it gets locked down in my eyes. That mm. means education, colleges, right? Supermarkets. Now, I'll, I'm going to go on record with this. Me and the missus went shopping, I think, to get the food shopping on the uh, 23rd of December, okay? And mm. that was in an essence solio, right? And when we fell out, filled out the form, me and the wife put the same. We felt like we got contracted COVID-19 from the supermarket. And the reason I say a supermarket, look at all the products they sell, sure. Are you saying to me that every member of staff in that supermarket are going over wiping down all them products? They're not, mate. The supermarkets are right from it. So why is it, why is it to this day they are still open? And why is it that the government allow them to do what they're doing knowing damn well more people have contracted COVID-19 from supermarkets and education than anything else and any other source in the UK? Now the fact of the matter, the fact of the matter is it all, sure is, is that supermarkets have been doing it this way and all the rest of it to begin with, which they were strict. But why is it that Warner, they're not as strict as it was the way when they first started? Now, I would look, if, if I was controlling that I was like the business secretary, and I had this piece evidence in front of me, I would say, right, you supermarkets, we're not going to lock you down, but what we want you to offer to your clients is a click and collect service. You've got big enough car parks, right? We're not going to allow any general public in your supermarkets no more. They can still be at work, they can still be open, but people mm -hmm. aren't allowed in them premises. People then have debit debt in their car parks, they have like car park one or whatever, they've got over 300 car parking spaces, right? They can allocate your click and collect number for your food, right? Why hasn't that happened, mate? Answer that. Well, it's, this is it, Rob. It's like... You know, do we go do we go the full technocrat way and, and you know you order your food in the morning, which is like what they do in prison, and then you know you go and pick your food up in the afternoon, or do we get the freedom to go shopping and do what we want and buy what we want and be, be consumers, which is what they trained us to be over the last twenty five years, which is go and consume their products, buy buy bulk, buy this, buy that, and now all that's coming to an end. Is it? Are we going into a new earth now where? You know, money could be irrelevant, and uh, we might actually need it. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, well, obviously, the, the, you know, the, the cash element in the next. Well, they're, they're, they're going crypto. They're going crypto. Yeah, and yeah, all your phone, right. all your money, and everything will be on your phone. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm aware of that, and I, and I know it's going to happen. You know what I mean? It, mm. Digital currencies and all the rest of it are going to happen. It, it, it's, a, it, it's a way of government control. Well, you see it. You uh, see it. You see it in the barbershop when people pay on their card. They pay on their phone now, don't they? Do you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It, it's a way we already see. We already see it. 
you've mm. got to remember that as well. You know, the cash elements, you know, I mean, it, it, it eventually going to go. You know, it's like our industry shut on at the moment, that, like 2020, um, that reports out that, that 4,800 uh, hairdressing businesses and barbering businesses basically closed. Yeah, it's not even, that's excluding the, the guys that have been renting chairs as well, which is makes up another sixty percent of our our industry. That they're probably plus sort of, you know, plus all the all the kids who didn't come through barbering, all yeah, the all the all the people who would have changed jobs who would have come into barbering, all the people who would have gone into education as teachers have, have missed opportunities there. There's multiple different um, things going on in, in just our industry, which has happened. You know, you got collapses of, um, you know, you know, pe people were setting up all different types of side businesses on the demand and stuff, weren't they? You know, whether it was merchandise, products, you know, education, putting on events, all this type of stuff. It's all collapsed, Robin. Uh, it's all collapsed. This know, is what's really difficult for for, for me and you to get to get yeah, where this has happened. Yeah. I'll advise anybody and a little bit of business advice, uh, you know, I mean, you know, I've been in business over 30 years, and I'll just say this, um, the number one priority, if you employ staff, look after your staff, okay, um, try and pay your rent, right, if you've got a mortgage on your property, pay your mortgage, if you owe money to HMRC, or any uh, government departments and all the rest of it, give them a ring, don't avoid them, and just say, listen, my business is shut at the moment. Can't afford to pay you. You need to give me time. Mm. And they, they will. You know what I mean? They ain't in the business, basically, of closing you down. Because it's like anything short. Well, you can't get blood out of a stone. Remember, this, mm. is the, this wasn't our choice to shut our own businesses down. This is the third time now. It was the mm. government's, not ours. So they've got to allow us time to pay anything that we owe indirectly under liabilities to HMRC or anyone like that, VAT, PAYE, corporation tax, any of these, give them a call, ignore the letters, they're only brown letters, give them a call and tell them, listen, I'm not open, and you know what? Sorry, Rob, connection's gone a bit bad. Get heavy. Because the thing is, you have to let them know what's going on. Even though they know what's going on. Do you know what I mean? They, they know what's going on. They know. They're not, they're not silly. You know? So all I, all I say is, is that just cover your, just get, you know, look after yourself, look after your members of staff. Pay. Pay, pay the things that keep you where you are. The rest, everyone else can wait. Seriously. Well, Rob, go go going into this now. Well, how long do you think this is going to go on for? Um, I'm hoping we'll I'm hoping we'll open the middle of February. Yeah. Again. Um. Yeah, I do. Um. I I, I just don't think the, the government can prolong it keep on knocking the country down in a, in a sense that it, 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 it helps now what it, what well, it does oh, hold on I don't know what's happening there right Rob let's yeah go on put it back to you if you that's it um, well basically look at what they did at Christmas they, they emerged to lock down Wales and then they, they they let you guys stay up until Christmas and then locked you down Christmas day which ruined everyone's well did ruin everyone's Christmases because people were still well, Boxing Day. People were still going for food, but Wales, was, Wales was fully locked down, fully. Yeah, the, 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 the trouble is, right, is that you know the way I see, you know, Birmingham was, was tier three, okay. London prior to it was only a tier two. Now London should have been tier three every day, mate. You know what I mean? And. The reason they kept London open, sure, is they wanted to keep the bars and restaurants open so the MPs could go and have lunch and have their Christmas socialising and all the rest of it. It's funny how the Kremlin and the Kremlin are all looked after there. But now, now, they're the ones that are really, really being hit hard, man. Do you know what I mean? And, you know, there's, there's some parts 
I think down in the south, uh, the, the military are helping out, and I think even in Wales, where they were as well with the ambulance service because they were being overwhelmed. Do you know what I mean? So the, the ambulance crews are indirectly um, struggling. Um, there's a problem, which there is a problem. But in the NHS, January and February, are always overwhelmed this time of year anyway. Do you know what well, I mean? Yeah, because it's winter, isn't it? And you know, it's dangerous outside. People slip, people slip over, people... They have gardening accidents. They have uh, there's a lot many incidents with, with winter. Uh, not even just flu or cold stuff. Just other incidents, accidents, people crashing into each other, roadside incidents. It's, it all goes on. Right? We all know that. So you know, yeah, and and, of course you and the thing is with the lockdown is that most people haven't been out. So there's like roadside incidents, stuff like that are, are minimised. But you know, at the end of the day, everyone's just breaking the rules now. It's just getting ridiculous, it's getting silly. Um, they're just using whatever they can to fear monger and, and, and they're trying to uh, destroy our will. And uh, at the end of the day, Rob, I don't think we can for much longer. I do think we'll be back over in February time, so it's great. Uh, probably around about the 11th of February, I'll get in myself, but that's just me. I, really I, I mean, listen, I say to anybody, all right, say to anybody, don't listen to the media, don't listen to the papers, don't listen to the scaremonger at the end of the day. Of course. They're, 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 that's what they're, they're doing. You know, they want you to speak, they want you to fear, they want you to feel bad about it, or they want you to talk to each other and slag about what they're saying and this and that. But, mate, potentially they can't afford to keep on doing what, they, what they're doing to us indirectly. Because you know what, Sean? Sure, what's going to happen, right? What's going to happen is people are going to do it anyway, mate. Do you, you see what I'm saying? People are just going to think to themselves, you know what, I can't open my business. You know, the National Hairdressing Federation went on record stating, I, I did send you the link about this. Yeah, I shared, no, I've read it, yeah. And, and, the, and the link stated what, that, that shop, you know, barber shops, hairdressing salons have to close. But, but with the lowest, lowest rate. You no, know, but, but you can still do mobile, basically. That's what they were trying to say, which, which well, it was one that one that you could go to. You could drop it if you're in tier four. You could go to a tier three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what, the way they spell it, spelled it out was was completely wrong. I think it was wrong, and I know it was wrong anyway. On the government website, it wasn't like that. On the government website, it states that you couldn't go around to people. No, you couldn't. You had to stay local. The only yes. way you could the, the only way you could travel was on business, which is what obviously New Year's Eve. I went to Bristol. I was there on business. You know, anybody wants to distribute that, you can ring the Hilton, which is the Hilton Gardens, and that's why I was there. I filled out all the business forms. I was there on business, and uh, that is uh, all part of the law. And like I said before, uh, Rob, you know, at the end of the day, you know, these lockdowns are there. They've been put in for as uh, as uh, precautions, but there is ways out of them, guys. And uh, you know, you just got to use what is there in front of you, and um, do what you need to do, Rob. But going on to um, Going on to um, actually like Christmas time, Rob. How 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 are things for you over in Birmingham? What what what, what do you mean? Like, well, the run up the run up to Christmas in work, the shop was open. You know, oh, you know December we again we, we smashed it, mate. You know. Well, I don't know. I was closed. <laughs> um, the, the, the December month, yeah. Um, you know, Chris, Christmas Eve generally. It's always relatively quiet, but I think on Christmas Eve I started about about half eight. I finished about four. And Sean, I never worked so hard, you know. Um, I, I think I've done about twenty-seven haircuts, you know, and which is very, very unlike me on Christmas Eve. And the shop was just easy, and I, I think people have probably just got the sense that we're potentially we're going to have another lockdown again, man. And that's why they're just coming off. Yeah, there. all panic. I know. Yeah, so, I haven't so. been back since then, mate. So when when I finished, that was it because I've been in isolation. So um, we were open two days. You know. Um, when you um and, just 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 for the viewers' knowledge, the Sweden TV fans, Rob, they, they're probably wondering when you're uh, when you're off when you're off that isolation. You what? Sorry. When you off isolation. Uh, tomorrow. Oh, happy tomorrow. days. There you go. Yeah, tomorrow. There you go. No, happy I mean, days. Hey, yeah. you get to celebrate your new year then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you know what? You know, I mean, 
You've had, you've, had, you've had track and trace spying on you, Rob. My God, mate. Unbelievable. It's like having an affair with the government. <laughs> My missus doesn't ring them in as many times as what track and trace does. Do you know what I mean? It's like... Yeah. Rob, I bet, has, I bet she has a bit of banter with him as well, didn't you? I bet you're like, oh, yeah, the boy told me you, yeah. Have you, have you had it? <laughs> you just tell us what to do, it, do you? <laughs> oh, no, I'll have him on the phone, mate. I was talking to one for about 20 minutes on the phone. She was agreeing with everything I was saying. You know, about, like... What's going media. on? You know, the, the you got to remember, the media and the government, they're not telling you how many people are recovering from COVID-19. They're only telling you the people that are dying with it. Well, we all know, we, we all, we all know a lie, 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 so, you know, let's leave that there. Anyway, Rob, let's move on to, um, let's move on to Barbering and uh, let's have a little chat about Barbering Um what you think is going to happen in 2021. Um, do you, like, do you think there will be events? Do you think um, we can get educational courses back up and running because there is a loophole there? Let's talk about that. So well, first, first of all, the shows and then the loophole with the education. With the shows, it, 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 it all comes together whether or not um, we, the government can get on top of things with the vaccines and uh, the more and more people that contracted COVID-19 and also the herd immunity that I've been talking about as well. I think what you've got to remember with shows, um, shows are massive social gatherings, basically and mass, any any social gathering over 30 now in the UK, uh, that's all you can have at, at present. So until we can get on top of uh, vaccines and herd immunity, I, I, can see, I could see probably three or four shows going ahead next year, but not all of them, but, and certainly not the numbers that were before. But I, I do feel some shows will happen, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. The earliest shows that are probably coming up is one in February, isn't that? Yeah. That Manchester, is it? Is that Manchester? Pro Hair Live. Pro Hair Live. I um. I don't, I don't think that one will roll ahead. Or, no. Or, I, I can't see it anyway. Um, but you know, it, it shows shows are gonna be completely different when we all return. That one, oh, of course. You know, shows are good for the industry, but I also feel there's a lot of people that have left the industry as well because of, you know, they're, they're not making a living, are they, man? No, if no. Not making, they can't live on fresh air. It's sad, but that's what's happened. Yeah. Yeah, I know, it's mad. And, so, uh, you know, not that, some, some events will happen. But not as many. Do you think? Um, do you think that um, Salon International will go ahead at the end of the year? Seeing that's the that's the that's the most furthest that's the furthest one away. Well, Salon International um, would also be one of the biggest, wasn't it? it it's a massive event. You see, it is the biggest, isn't it? Oh no, 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 no. Sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. No, it is the biggest. The biggest barber shows connect, isn't it? Yeah, Barber Connect is the biggest barber show. That one could potentially happen. But what I'm, what I'm saying is the numbers won't be as great. But mm. I'm saying the numbers won't be as great. Uh, they might extend the, the, the hours. So normally they open from 9 till 5. They're probably open from 9 till 11. But only allow a certain amount in per, per slot times. And you have to I, think, I think a lot of shows will go as well though, Rob. I don't think, I think, I think, I think only the biggest ones will, will stay. Yeah, yeah, they potentially will. Yeah, you know, because obviously, if you're financially, the fi fi financially mainly because of because of like, yeah, there's been no yeah. nobody's got any money to build up. Do you know what I mean? It's like every whether you've been a barber, hairstylist, nail beautician, um, you, you know, educator, product sales, whatever. You you haven't you have This has been the worst year of trade in 2020. Really, you haven't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously, if you have big players like your Walls and your Andis and your Babblies and Panasonics and all that, and they decide not to go, they're main exhibitors of these shows and sponsors and all the rest of it. Big if moolah, big moolah. Go, then, then, you know, really, that how they're going, how they're going to operate it? Do you know yeah. what I mean? These events are free, aren't they? You know, the tickets are free. 
fine. Well, mainly for me and you, they are. <laughs> I know quite a few people who have to pay to come in and watch us, us a few times, mate. Seen on other groups all moaning and moaning and moaning. But, what, um, what I'm saying is, mate, you know, it, it all depends on whether or not there's trust and confidence at these events that they're going to get the general public there. If the general public, the numbers are going to be there, the executives are going to get itchy fingers and think, you know what? I'm not, we're not going this year because you ain't going to get the people through the door. And if they ain't getting people through the door, these guys aren't spending money, are they? Think about it. Exactly. No, that's right. Exactly. And people, people forget to realise that it's like, you know, it's like, I don't know, people just, I don't know, people just, what's the word I'm looking for? They're, uh, they're self-motivated, and if there's no self-motivation to do these shows, then they're not going to happen, that's what I was going to say. Well, you know, I mean, look, any event, um, I mean, they're a good social gathering for people, they're a good place. I love them, I love them, it's great. And stuff like that, and... Um, British Master Barbers being the best one. Oh, my ass. Yeah, the British Master Barbers is, you know, a very small and humble type of setup, you know, and, you know, we run the, um, the members' room for them, which, you know, we both nailed, and, you know, and it, 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 it was a good it was a good day, and, you know, the, the British Master Barbers have to change the way they look at their setup and all the rest of it, because, unfortunately, mate, will, will they have to... Go up more of an online presence, or do they? Well, they are, aren't they? They've opened the university up. They're going online. You know. Yeah, yeah. Which I, I think, I think, to be honest, Rob, I think we're all going to end up online anyway. So it's just yeah, yeah. whether or not you come in at this time or not. But like going into, um, you know, the next question, Rob, really, which I, which I asked, which was, what was it then? Education. Education this year. Uh, yeah. The loop, the loophole with education. Um, the loopholes there, is it going to be used? Um, I've mentioned it a few times on, on well, things. Nobody's, nobody seems to talk, want to talk about it. Yeah, okay, right. Any, okay. any, what's your insight on it? Well, listen, um, Headmasters and Accredited Centre, it's an academy with BCTC. Now, I can do um, training days, okay? Now, I can only have a certain amount of people within my uh, academy. But I cannot have live models. They have to be mannequin doll heads. That's that, that that's the loophole behind it all. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, and the reason being is that enforcement, enforcement. You've got to let your local authority know that you are a training academy, and it's got to be part of your analysis that you send to them that this is what you're doing. Because the thing is. They could land on you potentially and say you're opening your business and you could potentially get a fine. But if you're an academy, right, and you're not working on live people, but if you're only having like two or three students in or delegates in, yeah. Or one to one, just one to one, one to one. Yeah, one to one. Or you could you could probably have two, two delegates or two students plus yourself. But you know, you cannot be working on live models that have yeah. been working on. Which, you know what my thoughts on that is, sure. You know, I think when I educate, I like to do it with live people, you know. That's people. been, that's, that's, that's been our, that's been our thought, Terry, haven't it, Rob? It, it always has been. Yeah. And, you know, because, you know, they have the feel of the head, they have the feel of the shape of the head, mm. their, their feelings, if you talk to a client, various mm. other things. Mm. You know, in mannequin doll heads, anyone can cut them, you know, mm. can move the head a certain way and this mm. and that. It's just some, sometimes it doesn't seem as real as what it does on a human person. One one thing which I will say from educating when I've worked for uh, um, certain companies over the years, when I found that um, you've had someone with an introduction to barbering, they bring a doll's head to somebody with an introduction to barbering, they bring, say, I don't know, their father, stepfather, brother, you know, cousin, mate, or whatever. If they've got hair and uh, they've already had a haircut, but they need a haircut, that structure there is a lot better to work on than it is with a mannequin head with long hair that you have, yeah, to, yeah, it down. You have to go through, you know, especially with somebody having to have before, it's very difficult to teach them, especially when you've got a class of like say, I don't know, six or seven, it's very difficult to sort of manage around that. So my advice as an educator and Rob with, with you as well, always, if you can, always try and use um, somebody who's already got a pre-hacker 
or make sure that you get a barber or somebody to take the dog's head down first before you join the class because you shouldn't really need the responsibility on top of the educator to be honest well, that's yeah. a, that's my feeling on it i'm just i'm just stating the obvious to some some of the educators out there who probably think the same you know but the thing the thing is it's like colleges you know um colleges i mean i think the government are on an r in their favor education so if they're a college studying hairdressing beauty or barber Mm. Uh, we don't know whether or not they're going to go back yet are you for sure no no you know what i mean um obviously education secondary education further education the, the, the kids are mass spreaders of covid so there's a problem there whether or not they're allowed to open again to see. but again the same principles apply with there in colleges they're only working on manic and all here tomorrow seriously mm. but they're only allowed you know uh it's the same same, same, same principle, same methods, and they, they can't have live models in that present. That's what I'm yeah. saying. So, so that, so it is the dot. You know, that's what I'm saying. So the advice is, try and obviously get the hair down first. If you're going to be doing educational classes, or it's, or, or it's the the option of uh, the, the educator needs to basically have the doll's head prepped, the red, ready one. Would you say? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. I mean, listen, it's really difficult because. I just think sometimes that you know i love to educate and but you've got to look beyond the realm now whether it's uh, one-to-one contact with a, a delegate or student you've got to yeah. look, look more towards more of a online platform now which hair by razor rob is, is developing that's working with british master barbers university which is that realm of online education type of thing so ministry of barbers as well rob yeah 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 the ministry of barbers i mean Obviously, there's a, there's a realm there that you, you can look into. So, you know, I don't think sometimes you can actually, you know, people learn in different ways, you know. Uh, so touch, the, the visual, all your, or the feel of things. So, you know, mm. people getting involved, for instance, they could probably learn better at one-to-one. Then some people that watch it like visual, like mm. watching a video, that's mm. where the online education comes in, mate. Mm. And, you know, I, I hear my razor rub, which there's a lot that I've put in that platform. I'm developing one, one well, the first effort is just be a classic pompadour, basically. Mm. Um, so I'm spelling out step by step in five minute segments, step by step of a, just for example, a, a classic pompadour uh, look. Mm. Uh, and then, then we'll then we'll go on to a, a, a textured cut, and then we'll go on to you know a, more of a skin fade drop or high medium fade. So I'll be I'll be doing ten to begin with. Mm. That be the first first lot, and then I'm going to add each month different cuts, different styles, different techniques. Mm. Um, and you've got constantly you can develop these platforms where people can visually go to your platform and view them do you know what i mean mm. so it's a bit like a model uh, i don't like to give too much away uh, it's a bit like a, a model or a bit like a, a netflix type of scenario where it's more of a subscription type of, uh, uh, also valuable to me <laughs> mm. you see what i mean and You've got to look beyond your chair now, because I think what it's taught a lot of us is that um, we can't we can't rely on our businesses being open anymore. <laughs> uh, if someone is someone signing up to a monthly fee and, and put all this in place, then happy days, you know what I mean. But people have got to believe in your brand. People have got to believe in you as a person. You know, people have got to trust in you. Yeah, that you're delivering a certain education they want to see online. Do you know what I mean? And then eventually they may even book a one-to-one course with you. Do you know? Because then it can lead you to different things. So it's yeah. not only a visual, it's also then more of a hands-on experience then. Yeah. Then so basically, basically, Rob, we need to rethink what we're doing. We need to uh, have a new structure. We need to move things online. Uh, we need to treat, uh, you know, change the way we work. But like, you know, go, going into something a bit lighter, obviously last year, was 2020 at the start of the year. I think it was the 16th of February, wasn't it? What was that for? 16th? That was the Grand Master class when you did it yours. Yeah, well... Uh, Let's have a little uh, chat about that. 
Well, prior to that one, uh, I was in Paul's place up in. The oh family. yes, yes, Davros uh, Barbers. That 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 was brilliant. That was, you know, we had like, oh, I think it was about twelve barbers, and man, it was a cracking day, and you know, they all learned something, you know, um, mm. they all went away, went away with some positive thoughts and positive thinking. They all tried different things and techniques, and you know, I went, I went, I went there, um, and I, I, I've always said this, right? Listen, guys, I ain't come here yet to teach you how to cut hair, okay? Exactly. Showed you, yeah. How to cut what I've come here to teach you is to enhance your skill set, okay? So if I can, t- if I can take something away from you guys of me coming here, then fair play. But if I've come here to enhance it, and you know what? They absolutely loved it, mate. And it's mm. the same in the course that we did at Headmasters. Mm. We had about, mm. how many was there? About 32 there, wasn't there? Uh, yeah, well, it was. there was just so many people I'd lost count, Rob. I'd lost count. We had it. We had Kenji Blade set up. We had yeah. all our. We had all our stuff set up. It was just. It was just a great day, really. Um, obviously, obviously, you were you were awarded me my uh, my uh, craftsman there, uh, master yeah. craftsman plaque. Yes, which uh, obviously you know, guys, every state registered to get. Um, great achievement as well. I, I think um, you've got yours as well, Rob. Oh, I have. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, again, like uh, when we do go back to normal in 2025, um, are you going to set up another Grandmaster uh, class? We will do, but I mean, I think we've got to get the time in right, mate, because... Well, in 2025, we've got loads of time to plan, right? <laughs> I, I, no, I'm hoping we're doing one in 2021. I'm being positive. I hope so, mate. Honestly. Even if... It, it, Rob, listen, do you know what, right? When you actually think about it, if you set up your camera in your shop, and I set up my camera in my shop, we could both, we could both, we could do the Grandmaster class on year in Zoom. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you yeah. could. Yeah, we're both doing it at the same time. You talk, I talk, you talk, I talk. Yeah, but um, yeah, Rob. So, so you know, go going on to um, um, you know, the last part now. I suppose uh, I was hoping a few of the other guys were going to pop on, but uh, we'll reschedule for next time, Rob. But anyway, yeah. um, you know. What's, um, what is going to happen with the insurance payouts for um, closure well, of the business? What's the update on that? Story on this, okay? Now, I do a guy um, that writes policies for underwriters. He yeah. works for a massive insurance company called AIG. Okay? He writes policy legislation. Okay? I cut his hair uh, on Christmas Eve, actually. And... Um, I wouldn't like to say what he earns, so I, I think he's on a six billion salary. He earns some serious money. And his words were to me, right? He was talking to me all about insurance and all the rest of it. He said, AIG have put away £295 billion pounds to cover business interruption. What does that tell you? Either that or they're stealing the money. No, they put the money aside. Because what he what he basically told me was they're going to end up paying out. Yeah, that's 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 if the government force them to. No, no, it's got no, it's got nothing to it's got nothing to do with the government at the moment. The 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 financial conduct authority t- took the insurance companies to court. Okay, it went to the high court, and the high court decided the insurance companies were liable. Okay, the insurance com- companies then appealed on a fast track system to the Supreme Court. Okay? Yeah. Fast track it to appeal against the decision. Okay? And yeah. the Supreme Court. Now that's been heard, that was heard over in December. Okay? But the findings are, are due out in this year, right? In January. Okay? And the findings, what he was saying to me, this guy, that writes legislation and policy for insurance companies, the insurance companies have already put the money away. So in other words, they're going to be found liable. Yeah. I bet I, this is this is what well, Rob, if that's if that is if that is the case, then like for me, I just think great, because clearly they're showing that they are showing some sort of your, your, your trouble is, you know, they 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 know that everybody's struggling, and, and this 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 money seems to just like magic out of nowhere sometimes. Rob, do you know what I mean? 
like like me, right? From from March the twenty third till um, the fourteenth of June, when my policy was up with the three level with uh, Alliance. So I was mm-hmm. with Alliance then. Um, I've got a, a, a firm of, of solicitors on the case on the no win no fee system, okay? And they mm-hmm. wanted me figures and this and that. So I, I sent them all my figures. So they went two years prior to the COVID that came in, what the trading figures are and now this and that. They wanted them figures, okay? Mm-hmm. And then they wanted the figures from March when we locked down to when we went back. Um, the 4th of July. Bearing in mind, I'm, I was only covered up until June because I changed the insurance companies. Mm. But I get sent in the figures, and on the figures, I'd lost £58,000. What? Basically. Now, now, it's all right being insured, but you've got to give the evidence to the insurance companies what you lost to your solicitor. If you don't give them that evidence, you're not going to get any money. So it's, it's not all... Co- Put and drive for people. Do you know what I mean? You've got to give your solicitors the evidence before any insurance company will pay out. 100%. Where I'm, where I'm going to be out of pocket is see November and see January because I'm with a different insurance company that doesn't cover COVID 19. I've lost two months as well. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So if you're taking out renew insurance now, most insurances are stating you're not covered for business interruption. That's that's horrendous behaviour. Yeah, that, that that's the standard with all of them with COVID nineteen. With all of them. Do you that's know what horrendous. I mean? That's horrendous. Yeah. Man. It makes you it makes you think why are we paying insurance for? Why are you paying insurance, yeah? You know, yeah. In, in, in my eyes, right, there isn't no one bigger than the government in shutting your business down. Now, in my eyes, that's business interruption. It's got nothing to do with COVID-19 or the human disease or anything. It's That is business interruption. Business interruption is when your business is being interrupted. Exactly. <laughs> There's the legalese there, Rob. And on that note, it? mate, huh? mate, and on that note, let's just wrap up the show now. It's been great. <laughs> Obviously, it was very technical difficulties at the start. I just checked the YouTube down here from him, so I'm not arse working now. It's fine. But, um, yeah, this will be saved. I'll, I'll edit it anyway, Rob. Just sharing yeah. it on your page. Um, love you to bits. Um, I hope everything goes great. I hope everything goes great for you 2021. Give Liz and the family my love. Um, obviously, I'll, I'll speak to you in a bit anyway. But, um, anyway. yeah, thank you, Rob. I'm in there. I'm in there. I'm in there. I'm in the lovely. Uh, I'm in the, I basically, I, I, I've flown over to uh, um, um, San Francisco. So, uh, I'm currently in the hills over here with my. Uh, my movie star makes um, obviously like the lighting's a bit weird, so not obviously I've got the, the alien spaceship there in the background as well, and the sun. So yeah, we've got everything in place. It's the new Earth, Rob. Thank you very much, Sweeney TV. Rob, yeah. anything you want? Anything you just want to just say just to wrap it up? Um, all, all, all I say, I just want a quick note, right? Um, everyone, be kind, be kind to each other, stay positive, stay focused, be true to yourself, all right? Don't don't get involved with any negativity on social media. If people are talking behind your back on social media, my advice, just block them. Do you know why I say yeah. block them? They don't bring anything to your life one little bit. And they've yeah. got gremlins in their own life, sure. Rob, Simple. Rob, they've been bullying me and you online now for two years, solid mate. Oh, and they keep, they keep doing it, they keep doing it. Just never crack on me, but I don't uh, care anymore. They've got don't sad, care. sad, sad lives. Sad. And I just, yeah, don't you even pay attention. I don't even know. I don't even know who they are. Half of them, Rob. That's what. That's what makes me laugh. Half of them. I get these. Get these mass screenshots coming from. I'm like, who are these people like? Oh, and like okay. the ones. The ones I do know. I'm not surprised at. So we all know who they are. But anyway, think, Rob. Think of it like this. If they're talking about us, mate, there's one word that comes to mind. Jealousy. Jealous. Yeah. That's but it. but what they don't realise is they're worshiping us as well. So then crack on. I don't worship them. I worship you and I worship myself and the people around me. Mate, and, um, what, know, what we got going on is so much stronger and better anyway. I can tell you this you now, mate. I can tell you the kind of people in life, the people that speak with positivity in life will go a lot further. Yeah. I'll tell you that. Well, the thing is, they they, they they try and send people over edges and, uh, you know, I think they, they, they bully people. They, you know, look up the Sam Warlock and, 
you know, like we don't know what's happened there. We don't know if he's been online brilliant. We don't know what's going on. But I know Sam was a victim of it. So, you know, I'd spoken to Baxter about it. And, um, you know, he's been a victim. You've been a victim. We've all been victims of it, mate. So, you know, it's how, how to deal with it as men, isn't it, bro? You know, at the end of the day, sticks and stones and all that, you know? I think it's important for any, anybody, anybody, and I'll say to you, and, you know, talk to each other. If you're struggling with your mental health and struggling with things, reach out to people, you know, yeah. reach out and talk to people. Yeah. Don't, 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 in silence, you know what I mean? If I see a post and I see something that they've posted, I'll always message them or direct message them and see if they're okay or, or potentially I'll even link them. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I, I am a human being. I have feelings like everyone else does. And, you know, I can see they're struggling. I'll give them a call. Yeah. And That's good, you, Rob. Good guy, man. Good guy. You know what I mean? That's how, I'm not judgmental. I'm, I probably should have been judgmental. Exactly. I'm exactly. Not, I don't, I've never been like that with people. You know that, anyway. Definitely, my friend. Definitely. And, Rob, listen, like, you've helped me loads. And, you know, I, I hope I've helped you as well. We help each other. And yeah. it's all about the, 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 the camaraderie that we've had over the years. We've got a great friendship, we've got, you know, we've got other people involved now in our little, you know, our unity group of barbers and there, uh, you know, it's all coming together. Um, like Rob, you know, all I can say that, you know, we just got pulled together this year now and anybody who's watching this, me and Rob Rose there to have a chat, conversation. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe um, tomorrow, in January, you know, it's going yeah, to be tough year yeah. Guys, yeah. Don't, don't be afraid to reach out, yeah. always there. You know, um, various people that, you know, we've got quite a bit of uh, links with people that are sincere and true people, you know, they're yeah. not snakes, you know, we are not snakes, we are yeah. sincere and true people. We're ladders, bro, ladders, 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 look, look at that, look, look at that ladder, it's a ladder, going <laughs> up to where, Rob, going up to where, I got a ladder behind me, mate, yeah. you know what I mean, so we're all, we're all good, what, we're all good. You know what, and, and I'll say to you, Take no notice of them. Don't let them grind you down. Because they, you they, they won't, Rob. They, they be doing it for two years, mate. In just... any of them, mate. I'll tell you that now. So, but um, yeah, I was thinking of opening the fans only anyway. Yeah, that's what you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Rob. Anyway, listen, brother. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming on the show. Sweetie, sweetie TV. Robert Cromer. It's the Ministry of Barbers. Cheers, buddy. Take care. Take care. Bye. Thanks, Woo. mate. Bye. <laughs> Bye. So, Sweeney, Sweeney TV, thank you very much. Live from uh, San Francisco. Um, we're going to be opening up the new HQ over in uh, in America. Um, I am joking, by the way. I'm in the room and it's background. So. But, uh, yeah, you know, think big, look big, act big, keep it big, big love. I just want to just say cosmic law out there at the moment is, is, is love. Projecting what you project, it will come back to you. And um, any negativity, if you live a negative life, you'll be a negative being and you'll project negativity onto others. Positive beings project positive energy onto others. And don't absorb negative energy. So on that note, Sean Sri Sweeney, love you all. I am out.